Uh, I am at just one. I don't want to say exactly oh, where okay. people I'm at. Yeah. Is there a lot of gamers, you think? Uh, There's a good bit. I actually good. started um, I started a Smash Brothers club. I started a gaming club this year for my school. So Why we, is it like really young kids? Are they playing Smash Brothers? I would have expected like Fortnite and stuff. They, they, they play Smash Brothers Ultimate, the Switch one. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we have like we have like a dozen kids, and once a week we play Smash Brothers after school, and then once a month there's like a local LAN, and a bunch of my buddies uh, run this LAN, so I know all the guys that work there. So I get my students like a, a discounted entry into the tournament once a month. So once so after school once a week we play Smash and like we practice and whatnot, and then I take them to a tournament once a month, and we go and we play Smash Brothers in the community. It's pretty fun. Hey, Salvo Mello with the 10 gifted subs. Thank you so much, dude. Is there like any really gifted or like very good students of yours at video games? Uh, there's one kid who shows a, a good bit of promise. There's one kid who's, he's he's good. The only game we really play is Smash Brothers, to be honest. Why don't you teach them Warcraft uh, 3? It's too old. They don't want to. None of them, the, the di also the district I work in is kind of poor. Like a lot of these kids, they don't even have a computer at home. Yeah, exactly. So, you don't need a computer to play Warcraft 3. What are you talking we about? We played this game on like uh, Pentium, whatever, 266 I'm, I'm, hertz, I'm like saying, piece of garbage. I'm saying, I'm saying these kids don't have a computer though. They don't have one. Yeah, so oh. you don't need one. <laughs> you need a, an antique. <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to convince them to... to to try out a game like Warcraft 3. So. Yeah. But anyway, like it was actually like the first week of school I saw them playing Smash Brothers and I was I I used to be pretty competitive at Smash Brothers Melee. That's how I got to know all the guys. The guys that I used to play Smash Where Brothers Melee with opened up this land in Columbus, Ohio. And uh I so I that's how I know these guys that run it and I saw these students playing Smash Brothers Ultimate and I was like, "Hey, are you guys any good at this game?" And a lot of the skills kind of transfer between melee and ultimate. And I was like, can I jump on and play? And I just wrecked them all. And they were like, who is this adult person who just came in and smashed us? But anyway, I, so then I told them like who I was and I'm, yeah, I used to play uh, smash melee in the community and I was pretty competitive. And then I, I kind of shot out the idea. I was like, do you guys want to start a smash club? And they were like all about it. So starting the next week, we had our Smash Club up and running, and it's been fun ever since. What does that mean, a Smash Club? Like, you guys just, like, meet and play a bunch? Yeah, basically. We meet after school, and we play for, like, two, two and a half hours. We just play Smash Brothers. But I use it, I actually use it as an opportunity to do, like, grade. I, I use it as student incentive, so a lot of what I do is, like, wraparound student supports. I don't mean to, to ignore the game. So Side is doing the same thing he did last game. But what I do in the school is I do wraparound student support, so... What that means is that I address like the non-academic barriers of the students. So like I said, the district that I work in is very high poverty. So a lot of these kids are struggling with a lot of different stuff. So in order for them to come to Smash Club, they have to have over a 2.0 GPA. They have to have 90% attendance. And if they're not, then I put them on like a support plan in order to get those like a higher GPA and I help them out in their classes and stuff. So from their point of view, they see it as like a video game club. From my point of view, I see it as like a way to get to know the kids and make sure that they're doing wow. what they're supposed so to Wow, so nice scouting by side. Oh, well, actually the surround, that's so nice. Though. Kinda missed. The gold mine is gonna get canceled, I think. But the Fossil is gonna be forced to TP. Yeah, he saw the army coming with the skeleton. He missed a bunch of the surrounds actually here. That was really weird, but yeah, he eventually was, forced the Fossil to TP. But yeah, the skeleton scout was sick. Because he saw the army coming, got in position. But Spiral, I think this is well worth it, losing a TP to get a cancel on that gold mine. Because then he really slows down the mining from that. And Side doesn't have the wood to restart the gold mine. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. And he's going to run back. He's going to get a staff attention on his first year. He doesn't first year. And he's going to run right back, try and get another cancel. And if he gets the second cancel, that's... It's huge. I yeah, mean, I think it's because yeah, he didn't cancel, so he didn't get like gold and wood back. He was too busy like focusing on the fossil. That's a pretty sick item, by the way, the Century War. So this time, Sparrow's playing aggressive, but like he's doing it really well. Are you still there? Yeah. No, I'm reading through the chat and I see there's someone. In play uh smash with Please me at osu amar skips shout out to amar skips what's up OSU really? Melee. he played with you yeah yeah i know 
that's kind of funny. Did you win? <laughs> uh, I think so. I was one of the better sheiks for a while. Yeah. I, I wasn't like the best, the best, but I was. Uh, I was probably. I don't know. I was somewhere in the top ten. I was. I was in the power rankings, which means I was in the top ten of like Columbus. But that's not saying a lot, you know. Very sick staff here. He's trying to get the Shrine on the Foss here. There's a Penta as well that's gonna burn everything with Breath of Fire. But he's still gonna kill the oh. Foss here. Oh! So I don't even know if that's worse. Both sides taking heavy losses there. Staffing in, getting the double surround, making sure that Farseer goes down. Oh my god, he's gonna tower. see towers coming up from Spiral. This is a tier two fortify, fortified tower push. Uh, actually, the fortified upgrade isn't even started yet. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just, he wants to get towers up and then maybe expand there himself. Just get demolishers. This is weird though, because I guess I can kind of attack the towers, but I mean, there is grunts left over. Without a spirit tower to do some real damage there, it's going to be tough for side to actually fight this properly. But Fana is getting a ton of cancels. He's going to run out of hit points, to be honest, and he's still tier 1. He's going for another crypt. Does side is on 33 supply. Space? Yeah, he has that second trip going up and he has ghouls pumping, but he, like you said, he's running out. He really has bank on that Nerubian tower. I'd like to see a second or maybe even a third ziggurat going up in his main. Side has a ton of resources he could be spending to help defend us. All these grunts kind of, Side is forced to focus these towers and these grunts are just kind of auto attack. Similar to that Night Elf matchup earlier when you just auto attack, meaning you just let the units kind of make sure that they're doing the damage that they're supposed to be doing. That's what these grunts are doing. They're just running around, hitting whatever's close to them, making sure they're putting out the, you know, 18 to 21 damage per second. And uh, as you can see, all of the side's units are red, and it looks like this expo is going to fall, and I expect to see a GG here in a second. Yeah, it is. I think if he had gone for a Spirit Tower instead of Nerubian, that would have been so much better, and if it had been a bit more to the right too. I'm a bit surprised. Maybe he didn't, he didn't need to commit against the towers either. Like, why did he need to cancel them this bad? He could have just made two more towers, like next to the gold mine. And I mean, then he gets. I guess he gets um, demolisher pushed. But Carion Swarm works on demolishers, right? It works on mechanical units. Now. Hey, we're good. Well, yeah, it works on mechanical. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think Side could have done a better job of using the gold that he had to defend us. Um, I'm sure he was focused on doing a hundred different other things, so it's it's hard to say one way or the other. Spyro had a, a good strategy here. He he did a four grunt two hero, a strong timing push. He did a great job of getting the cancel on the expansion early on, slowing down sides. Maybe it's not uh, over. Side got a ton of ghouls. He's coming back in. I would be very surprised. Dude, he oh, can kill the no, Fars here, I think, by the way. He could kill the Fars here. here. That, that stop teleportation is on cooldown for another 10 seconds oh or so. Oh my god. And he's gonna get us around. Is the Dreadlord gonna come out in time? To yeah, get it is, I think. Oh, no. Not if he kills it now. Oh, oh! Okay, oh, he, he, he actually delayed that attack by one second. But I he don't think... It. No, Dreadlord uh, didn't no, get the XP, did he? Yeah, he yeah. didn't get it. He missed it. I had it. I had my mouse click on the altar to check. And uh, no, he did not get it. It was so close. But he is gonna get the panda kill. Oh and it my looks god. like he's gonna hold this up. I apologize for saying he was gonna G because it, it looked dire, but uh side side getting two hero kills. Who are you? You ma absolute madman. I think he's gonna no. win from there, like he's got it's expo, like good. Sparrow committed everything to breaking this expo and now it's gonna hold. These these grunts are just EXP tomes for this for this and side was wow. able to swing that back. What a hell of a game. Holy heck.